Hey guys, this is trainer and coach Josh, and this is the follow-up to the nutrition webinar on December 28th. Um, many of you guys attended, and thank you for that. Glad that you got some great value out of it. But I wanted to provide a little bit more information than what I was able to in that 30 minutes. I wanted to um, stay focused, but um, moving back and forth in between screen captures and data and all that, I felt like I was... Um, not able to deliver all the information I wanted to. So I'm gonna add a little bit more information here about how to dial in on your individual needs that goes beyond just the, the simplified formula that I shared. I'm gonna share that as well. Anyhow, I'm gonna start uh, sharing screen sharing and we're gonna to go to work. All right, so we are, okay, so this is the uh, free nutrition R nutrition webinar webpage and I will post this video up there and share it with anybody that wants to access it. But basically what I wanted to, to start with is just the concept that these lifestyle habits and behaviors, these things are easy to do and they're easy not to do. It's easy to prepare your food in advance. It's easy to eat every two to three hours. It really is. It just takes some practice. And it's also easy to not do it. It's easy to avoid it. And what happens is if we if we practice the right habits and behaviors over time, we have incredible success. If we continue to compound the, uh, the same errors in judgment and neglect over and over, we have those results of failure and lack of health, lack of energy, and um, a creation of disease states. All that good stuff occurs when we get into the neglect area. So this is really about being consistent. It's not about perfection. It's just about taking the principles that you're about to learn and applying them as consistently as possible. Um, just a heads up, I'm going to be doing a free week of coaching from January 5th to January 10th. It's actually five days to help you guys apply this now, these disciplines around portioning and timing and combining foods. So I'm going to move on to the next slide here. And this is are sumo wrestlers. And the reason I've got this slide up here is because most people are in the habit, or I shouldn't say most people, most people that are overweight or obese are in the habit of eating as if they were an amateur sumo wrestler. Basically, sumo wrestlers, they starve themselves intentionally, eat all of their calories at their evening meal, throw down some sake, and go to bed. And what that does is that trains their body to stay in starvation mode, which helps them increase their fat mass, which is part of the sumo culture. But that is not a very good idea for longevity, for health and vitality. So basically to counteract this is that we need to be eating every two to three hours. And if you look at a baby's metabolism and baby's habit when they come into this world, how often do we have to feed them? We've got to feed them every two to three hours. So in order to maintain healthy body composition and body mass, we've got to be feeding that metabolic fire every two to three hours. Now, I would have you take that notion away as probably the most powerful concept behind this call. Taking it to the next level is not only eating every two to three hours, but knowing what to eat as far as... Um, the type of food, protein, fats, or carbs, otherwise known as macronutrients. That will take you to level two. But even if you don't get the exact balance of macronutrients, you're going to be better off eating every two to three hours than starving yourself. Um, most people right now in our working world, they skip breakfast, they grab a cup of coffee, and they don't get a good snack, they don't get a good lunch, they reach for sugar and caffeine to boost their energy to get them through the afternoon, and then they have all of their calories at their evening meal and go to bed, watch TV, and then do it again the next day. And that's where we get that amateur sumo lifestyle. So I've got a little other um, graphic here. So this is really what we need to be doing. We need to be having our, having our breakfast. And then two to three hours later, we need a morning snack. Two to three hours later, we need our lunch. Basically, every two to three hours, we're eating so that we keep that metabolic fire hot. And I love the analogy of a fire because if you want light and heat in terms of a fire, you've got to put good fuel in that fire and you've got to be ready with another source of fuel or another log, so to speak, um, if you want to keep light and heat going. If you keep if you, if you starve the body, the body quickly goes in starvation mode and you begin to hang on to everything that your body intakes. All right, so um, I'm going to move into the simple version of arriving at what you need 
on a regular basis. So this is a quick calculation and this document, this is the nutrition plan that I use myself and that I use for many, 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 many clients. Those that apply it, they're blown away with the results. So this is a simplified calculation. You take your weight times a factor of 11, and I've done an example here at 180 pounds, take weight times a factor of 11, that gives us a number of uh, 1,980 calories. That is, that is a rough RMR calculation, resting metabolic rate calculation. Now what we're going to be doing is taking that 1,900 calories, that would be that would be a number that we would use if we weren't being active and we wanted to maintain our body weight. We, I would eat um, 1,980 uh, calories. Now, if I am attending, this is done for some of my Camp Gladiator clients, and we can adjust this according to your needs, but basically, um, I've, if I'm attending Camp Gladiator three times a week, then that means I'm burning, on average, uh, 300 calories a day. And let me pop up a spreadsheet real quick and show you how I arrived at that calculation. Let's see. New book. Okay. So if I'm burning at, at, for an hour workout, that's 60 minutes of a workout, I am burning approximately 600 calories. So that is 600 calories times three days a week. That equals three times 600. That's 1,800. Now I'm going to divide that over a seven-day period, and that gives me um, 20, uh, 257 calories burned with my activity on average. Now, I just did a quick middle point uh, between three and four. So if that's four, that's 342. So I'm just going to go three and a half days a week, and that's where I get my 300 calories burned on average per day based on my attendance and based on my six, uh, based on my 60 minutes and um, based on my 60 minutes, three to four times a week. So if I add 1800, my resting metabolic maintenance number to 300, now I am needing 2280 calories in order to um, supplement what I'm burning on my activity. Now, this is, again, just to maintain. Now, if I want to lose weight, if I want to lose weight, I need a calorie deficit. So what this calculates in is, well, let's go back to that spreadsheet again. I want to show you something. 3,500 calories, and calories are units of energy. 3,500 calories equals a pound, one pound, okay? So if I want to lose a pound over seven days a week, then I need to take um, 37 hang on. I need to take 3,500 divided by 7. 3,500 divided by 7. I need a 500 calorie deficit per day. So if I wanted to lose a little more, let's say I wanted to lose a pound and a half, 1.5, I need to burn. So I need to burn 750 calories per day, or I need to have a, a 750 calorie deficit per day. So if I take this 1780 and minus 750, that's giving me a one and a half pound loss per week. I'm at 1,530 calories. One thing to note is that I don't want you to go lower than the 1,200 range, this 1,200, and I don't want you to go higher than the 2,130. This, these four levels will take care of business if your goal is fat loss. It's a different approach if your goal is mass gaining. And that's something that I'm not going to get into on this call. If you want to contact me and ask me about that, I'm happy to coach you through that. Um, I personally have been in a mass gaining phase for the last three months. I started at 176. I'm now weighing in at 205. Uh, that's roughly 18, 20 pound lean mass gain and seven to nine pound fat mass gain. That's where I am. Now, I'm going to change how I'm eating to reduce my fat mass so I'm just left with my muscle mass and that's my goal for the new year. All right, so we're going to take a look at this this particular um, this particular person's goal here. 1530 is where they want to be. So they're in the second the second calorie range column as far as this meal plan is concerned. So what this means is that they're going to get uh, this person is going to get four servings every day of vegetables. We'll take a look at that list in a second. A serving size is one cup. 
if you want to simplify this process even more, these cool little containers are available. They're, you take the guesswork out of your measurements completely and just follow, you know, just fill that container up four times and eat that throughout the day. Now, you go to the next food category, fruits. You get three servings of fruits, and that's one cup servings again. For proteins, you get four three-quarter cup servings of protein. For carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, that is coded as yellow, and those are half cup servings. Okay, so you can get three of those a day. Again, this is if you're in the 1500 to right under 1800 calorie range. Now we've got uh, three sources of fats as well. The blue fats, let's go down and take a look at the foods. The blue fats are nuts, avocado, um, coconut milk, almond milk. Those are your blue fats. And for this person, they get one serving of those avocado nuts. Now, in, in terms of fluid ounces, um, that would be an eight ounce serving of almond milk or coconut milk that you would be getting in order to fulfill that one fat. Now, on the next fat, those are orange. That's, that's seeds. And those, so, those seeds are the serving size is two tablespoons. And you would be, allow yourself one of those per day. The next category is oils and butters. And that's going to be four servings. And those are one teaspoon servings. You're going to get four of those per day. So now let's go take a look at the food lists. And we'll come back up to look at this, this chart in a second. So here's our food list, and this is a part of, the, um, part of the file that I've given you access to. You've got your greens, which are your vegetable recommendations. And this chart is set up so that the foods at the top are the most nutrient-dense foods on the chart. So, for example, nu nutrient-dense foods mean that the food has the most vitamins and minerals per calorie um, as compared to those lower. So kale is the highest scoring one on this list. At the lower side, you've got onions and sprouts. It doesn't mean those are bad foods. It just means that they're not as nutrient dense as the stuff in the top. So that holds true for all across the board. Here's your highest. Um, so here, this, this is not a food. Uh, pumpkin, all of those are your foods there. So the... Um, you know, for example, raspberries are the most nutrient dense in the fruit category. Anchovies, the most nutrient dense in the protein category. Sweet potatoes, most protein dense in the complex carbohydrate category. Avocado, as far as the uh, nuts, cat, uh, nuts and um, avocado, it's in its own category. Pumpkin for seeds, olive for oils. I personally use a lot of coconut oil because I like it better. Um, anyhow, these are your food choices. My recommendation is that you go and you grab three or four staples from each category so you have it on hand. And the way you're going to apply this is you're going to look at this little, this little chart, this little calorie chart. And what you're going to be doing, here's an example of somebody that is working with the 1200 to 1499 range. They need three Three vegetables, two fruits, four proteins, two yellow carbohydrates, one blue, one orange, and two of the gray teaspoon oils. And what they've done is they have, they have figured out their six meals. This chart shows six meals a day. So for breakfast, they had a fruit and a protein. That could have, that could have been a scoop of protein powder and a cup of frozen uh, frozen strawberries or a cup of frozen banana made a little smoothie. Um, it could have been a cup of cantaloupe, um, could have been a cup of cantaloupe and a lean ham steak, um, something like that, or a lean piece of turkey or lean piece of chicken. In terms of ounces, the serving size, this three quarter cup serving size can be converted into roughly between four and five ounces. So, you know, if you want to focus on four and a half ounces, if you're using the scale, that's fine. Again, you've got these containers to work from. If you want to order them, the link is available. In fact, the entire uh, nutrition plan complete with recipes and all that kind of stuff are available as well. It's called the portion fix. And I'm going to put a uh, actually, I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'm going to pull that up real quick, the portion fix. 